Hello, warm welcome to uh, those of you attending tonight's uh, North Planning uh, Committee and also those of you uh, watching live on the Hillingdon Council YouTube channel. Uh, firstly, those of you uh, who watch these things regularly will notice that I'm uh, not Councillor Eddie Lavery. Uh, it's Councillor Duncan Flynn uh, chairing the meeting tonight in Councillor Lavery's absence. Um, we'll just do our usual uh, announcements um, before we, we kick off. Um, just to let you know, this is a meeting held in public, but not a public meeting. So um, the only people speaking tonight will be uh, the applicants, uh, petitioners, uh, and the councillors and officers uh, around the table. Um, I'll introduce uh, those of you who are present, uh, and I'll start off uh, on the left-hand side. Uh, we've got, starting from the bottom, uh, Councillor Sansapuri, Councillor Dillon, Councillor Dot, and on the right-hand side, uh, starting from the bottom, Councillor Higgins, Councillor Chapman, Councillor Melvin, Councillor Tuckwell, Councillor Hagger, uh, and the officers uh, tonight, we've got uh, Nicole Cameron as our legal advisor, Anish Teji from Democratic Services, James Roger, Head of Planning, Matt Koloszewski, uh, Planning Team Manager, and Alan Tilly uh, on Transport. So, um, just so uh, we are not under any uh, confusion on this, we're not expecting a fire drill tonight, so if the alarm goes off, please follow officers to the uh, fire exits and out the building through the designated meeting points. Also, if you could turn your uh, phones off uh, or uh, at least have them on silent, that would be appreciated so we don't get any disturbances during the course of the meeting. Um, let me kick off then uh, with apologies for ab of absence. Apologies for absence. So apologies received from Councillor Lavery with Councillor Tuckwell substituting. Apologies received from Councillor Goddard with Councillor Chapman substituting. And apologies received from Councillor Oswell with Councillor Dillon substituting. Thank you very much. And uh, second item is uh, declarations of interest in matters uh, before the committee this evening. Does, uh, do I see any declarations of interest at all? No, nope, see no in declarations there, so um, we'll move on. And we'll have a look at the uh, meeting uh, minutes from the meeting which was held on the 20th of November. I don't know if anyone has any comments on any of those meeting minutes. No, are we happy to agree those? Agreed. Agreed. Okay, marvellous. Um, we have got um, an item uh, part two tonight, so uh, if those of you in the audience are minded to hang on uh, till the bitter end, we'll politely have to ask you to leave uh, when that part two item is heard, and obviously the YouTube will be turned off, um, but most of the items are in part one. Um, I just should also remind uh, those of you uh, attending that I am, as the chairman, I have the casting vote, uh, so I won't be voting on um, items tonight unless they're a tie. Uh, that's convention for this committee. So without further ado, uh, we'll move on to the one item we have uh, with a petition, uh, which is land at uh, 40 Ducks Hill Road, Northwood. Uh, and if I can ask the officers, officers to start the presentation on this. Thank you, Chairman. Um, the application is seeking planning permission for the erection of a single-storey, four-bed, detached dwelling, dwelling house with habitable basement space, a rear garden area to the host dwelling. I'll take members through the, through the slides. Um, the application site is here in red. It's to the rear of uh, number 40 Ducks Hill Road. Um, the access here off Signet Close. And it's a proposed layout plan. You'll see the house, the proposed house in this location here, with a um, tiered terrace to the rear. So the tiered terrace is there. The house itself, with the basement, is in this location here. Uh, these proposed plans, um, you can see from the front, um, you'll see a single-storey building. Um, from the rear, you will see that the single-storey element there, with the basement below it, and obviously two side elevations there. Um, it's important to note this is actually a resubmission of a previously refused scheme, which was also dismissed at appeal. Um, 
this just for reference is actually a CGI that the architects provided of what the view from the rear windows would be so that's what you'd see for the proposed terrace to the rear the tier terrace you have one level here the decking another level up there you can make out the seating up there and the third level at the top with sort of planting of various nature um, this uh, slide here this shows the proposed um, house here and then outlined in red here you will see where the um, previous previously refused house was or the outline of it and this is a comparison again that was the house that was proposed um, which was refused and dismissed at appeal and again this is the proposed dwellings the front elevation of the refused and the proposed um, here we have a comparison layout plans of the proposed here so you've got the building the house in this sort of L shaped sort of upside down L shaped there with the terrace at the back and here you can see where the house was what's important to note is that with this um, proposal the house is roughly next or to the rear of number seven Muscovy Close and it's called plot four on that plan but that is number seven and the reason it was called plot four is that that's what it was called at the original planning permission for this area of Muscovy Close um, I'll take you some sort of aerial photos you'll see here the site there in red this is uh, obviously quite an old um, aerial that shows Muscovy Close houses being erected uh, just another aerial now here's um, an older aerial from 2006 you've got the rear of number 40 which is here in that location there and you will note it's difficult to see because it's quite how dark this one is but here you can see Muscovy Close being built with the 10 houses that were approved in January 2014 by committee um, previously what you had is three large houses as you can see one there one there and one there so in terms of character We've previously approved a scheme effectively in the back gardens of houses, not down the houses. Here it's um, the very large garden for number 40. Number 40 and 38 have permission to be demolished and erect a block of flats. Um, and they've got far more, more than enough amenity space. And the permission actually does dissect the site to that approximately that location there. Um, so in terms of, if I just go back to the aerial here, in terms of what's important is the house will be in this location here, sort of parallel to the boundary, so it'll be roughly there. And what, as you can see from the area, you've got houses at sort of juxtapositions to each other. You've got a terrace of houses there, here, you've got a house there, and then you've got Muscovy Close, which is sort of a U shape, if you like, a long U shape here, with the house with houses along Ducks Hill Road there. So in terms of a character of the area, it's, it's very mi very much mixed. So in views of offices, the the proposed house, a single story house, wouldn't, I mean, it wouldn't be out of keeping. You wouldn't particularly see it. I'll show you some more photos of the street scene. Um, this is from Signet Close. So if I just go, Signet Close is to the rear here, um, where the access would be for the site. Um, this is the back garden of number 40. With a fed, it's taken from Signet Close. Again, it's not coming out particularly clearly, but we, this is Seven Muscovy Close, from which we have the um, the letter in front of you from the representation where the neighbour is stating there will be an impact to their house. You can see there's a large heather, is it heather? Hazel. Hazel, Hazel hedge uh, along there that's on the site, application site and will be maintained. Um, so again just giving some context of the site here. What you can see is the TPO trees along the boundary of Signet Close and they've obviously been retained. Um, this is where the access would be. You've got existing access to the house on Signet Close. The access to the site would be between a tree and the fence post there, just for cars. Um, we will be at proposing an, an additional condition for the construction management plan, um, should the application be approved. And if I just show you that, the reason for that, if I just go back, is that we propose that, oh, the applicant has actually agreed that should the application be approved, um, all construction traffic will actually come through Ducks Hill Road entrance so it won't go down Signet Close because it is a um, narrow road and the access is very tight and it simply, the lorry simply wouldn't fit um, 
again, it's just more photos of the site, with the, with, as you can see, in the context being the houses to the rear there um, on, on Muscovy Place. Uh, a few more slides. Um, this is a slide I've taken off Google Street View. So the actual entrance will be at sort of that bend of Signet Close there. The house itself will actually, if you're looking from this position, be so the site is here. The house will actually be behind those garages. And in context of what you're seeing, you'll be actually seeing the two-story houses on Muscovy Close to the uh, place, excuse me, to the rear. Um, this is a f photo again doesn't come out too clearly, but of the existing hedge on the site. This is number um, 7 Muscovy, which is, again, where you've got the letter from. And then that neighbour is objecting because of the impact on them and the visual impact to them. But as you can see, there is a two and a half metre, maybe, three metre high hedge, um, existing hedge, which will be protected and maintained. The landscape officer has explained that um, the what type of hedge is it again? Hazel hedge, excuse me. Hazel hedge is one of the most robust hedges that, you, that there are and would withstand the construction elements or the development. And even if it were it to be damaged in some way, it will grow back very, very quickly. Again, that's just showing the hedge, which goes all the way down. So it pro and will protect number seven. Um, in terms of the principle of development, although this, um, this site is located within a rear garden, it is noted that the planning inspector on the previous application clearly state that given the proposed dwelling would have its frontage onto Signet close to the rear and take vehicle access from it, from it, it is difficult to see how the proposed development could be described as background development in this particular case. The additional dwelling would comply with the key objective to deliver more housing units. Um, in terms of the impact on, on neighbours, um, the proposed house, in fact I'll take you back to the slide that compares it, so you can actually look at it as I'm describing, the proposed house uh, would be located 1.5 metres from the rear boundaries of number 6 and 7 Muscovy Place. The plan is shown that the corner of number 7, close to the boundary, would be located 6 metres from the property. There is a concern raised by the neighbour, stating that it, it is only 5.5 metres from the boundary. Have officers have, ra uh, have measured it off GIS and, confirm, and can confirm it is 6 metres. As such, the distance between the closest part of number 7 and the proposed one would be 7.5 metres. The proposed dwelling would not intersect the 25 degree vertical line from the closest section. In addition, there is a um, two metre high boundary fence separating the properties, and the dwelling would only project above this by 1.5 metres and would be located 1.5 metres from, the f from that fence. And with the um, hedge in between the two, you've, you, it, you would phys simply wouldn't see it. It wouldn't have an impact, or very, very limited impact. Um, although it would be visible, although it, would be part, it could be partially visible from Muscovy Close, it's considered distance between the properties, and a limited height would not result in a feeling of over-dominance, and would not result from a loss of outlook from the ground floor windows. It would not impact on the first floor windows, which are set even further back from the shared boundary. The proposed dwelling would be located to the north of Number Seven, and so it's considered to not have a detriment, detrimental impact on the sunlight of this property. Um, if I take members to the addendum. There's actually a plan on the plans list and also in this pack, which is plan 127 stroke P3 stroke 3, which is um, a previous ground floor and basement plan which has been superseded and has accidentally been included. Um, I just take members, sorry, back to the um, letter, if you like, from, from the resident of number 7. It runs through a number of issues, all of which I've tried to address in my presentation. I'm sure the um, person will speak about it. And for the reasons summarised, it is recommended that the application be approved. Thank you, Chairman. I'll be very quick because Matt's done a lengthy presentation. So just to clarify, it's recommended for approval with the 14 conditions in the report plus an extra 15th one, which would be a construction management condition, which we would basically use to ensure that the vehicles uh, access the site from construction vehicles access the site from Duxhill Road. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. We have a petition uh, on this item, so I'll invite the uh, lead petitioner. Uh, Mr. Schran to address the committee. You ha That's already been handed out. You have, Mr. Schran, you have five minutes 
to address the committee. We operate a traffic light system. Uh, after four minutes, it will uh, go yellow, which is a warning that you have another minute left to wrap up. Brilliant. Uh, so, yeah, uh, my name is Deepak. I'm a resident within Muscovy Place, uh, not number seven. Um, so I think whilst the application is uh, fundamentally different from the one which was previously rejected, I think a number of the reasons that were given for the approval just there uh, contradict specific conclusions drawn by the planning in inspectorate that remain equally relevant within this application. So I think planning officers' conclusions are, are therefore a little bit inconsistent and, I would argue, unreasonable given the relevant determination by the planning inspectorates. Previously, uh, in particular, on three issues. One is the impact on the street scene in Signet Close and not necessarily uh, Muscovy Place. Uh, over dominance onto number seven, Muscovy Place, and no presumption in favor of development, uh, that being obviously the basis for developing garden land must weigh against the, the negligible benefit of a single new property versus significant harm on the proposal of the character of the road and the impact on neighbors. Um, I'll elaborate on a couple of those points uh, so the proposed development is an incongruous addition to the Signet Close street scene and does not comply with, or I do, do not believe complies with B13 and B19 regardless of the reduced scale. Uh, it is, you know, contrary to the sense of space and character of Signet Close. Um, the proposal suggests that the development won't be vis visible for the residents of Signet Close, but this is only true of the north side of Signet Close, and it, it will be clearly visible from the south side throughout the year and is in stark contrast to the surrounding area. In fact, the, the Hillingdon Conservation Officer noted the design would start, be starkly different to the character and appearance of the surrounding area. With regards to the enclosure and over dominance of number seven, I think within the document provided, I think there are images on pages eight, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen which help to illustrate this. The, the single story building would run the entire length of number seven and is and is actually even more dominant than the original proposal that was previously rejected. Uh, in particular, the inspectorate determined that the single-story extension by itself was over-dominant. This point was made regardless of the two-story structure, which was a separate point for refusal in that instance. So the officers in submission for the original appeal did not identify the single-story extension as an issue, but the planning inspectorate specifically added it as an additional issue. So the planning officers, I think, have ignored this conclusion from the inspectorate within this conclusion. Uh, the previous uh, application obviously concluded that the single story would have a harmful enclosing effect on the garden. Uh, I think that overdominance is worse with the building being higher and, and closer to, to number seven. Um, and I think on the last point, look, there is no meaningful benefit to the to local area or the housing supply dynamic. This is a, a single dwelling. There is negligible benefit of producing a single dwelling. It does not assist in any affordable housing focus identified by London Plan. does not compensate for significant harm to the character of the area or negative impact on neighbours' amenities. And paragraph 48 of MPPF states that five-year supply targets should not compromise developments of residential gardens. Uh, and I think the planning inspectorate supports this view, and obviously we'd ask members of the committee and officers to, to visit Signet and Muscovy to, to see truly what the impact of the area and the neighbours is. And I'll pause there. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, do I see any questions from members to the petitioner? Councillor Higgins? Uh, yeah, just, um, the officers showed a picture of the hazelwood tree. Um, or bush. Um, how are you? Do you live at that house? I don't live in number seven. Do you know no. how high that hedge is? Uh, so, if you look at the existing hedge, I think the applicant has allowed it to grow to about three and a half metres currently. Uh, it was previously always maintained at a level below the the fence. Uh, I think actually the hedge itself within the um, the, page, the pages supplied by uh, number seven actually give you a sense of just how so that dominant the, that's it is. The, that's on the side of the application, not on it's the on the side of the applicant. Yeah, so it's he's, he's grown that to give something. Okay, thank you very much. Don't see any other questions, so thank you. We also have the uh, applicant's agent here this evening, Mr. Finch. Uh, same rules for you: five minutes. Uh, after four minutes, the light will go. Uh, yellow, which is your warning, and please uh, press your microphone when you wish to start addressing the committee. Thank you, Mr Chairman. So, yes, I represent the applicant and speak in support of this application. 
I would simply like to take this opportunity to highlight to the committee members that this application has been recommended for approval. It was submitted nine months ago and it has undergone a detailed and thorough assessment, not just by the planning officers, but by also, by also from the uh, council's own specialist consultants. Taking on board all relative material planning considerations, the council are now satisfied with the proposal, which is why they are recommending it for approval. With this level of support, we trust that the committee members will agree with the council's recommendation for approval. Um, finally, I'm keeping this brief because a lot of the detail has gone into the nine months that's gone before, um, but I'd just like to read out the conclusion from the officer's report, which states, the proposal would not be considered as backland development, and taking into account all other material planning considerations, it would not have a detrimental impact on the street scene nor the surrounding area due to its height, and it would have an acceptable level of impact on the neighbouring properties and would provide satisfactory residential amenity for future occupants. Subsequently, the application is recommended for approval. Um, one last point, just picking up on what the petitioners were stating. In terms of visibility, Muscovoy Place was approved at committee. That is substantially more visible in the Signet Close street scene than the proposal we're, which we're putting forward. I mean, you can kind of see it there. It's very dominant. So that's just something to bear in mind. Uh, the proposal is tucked away behind the garages. It's single story, no higher than that hedge. Um, so that's just something to bear in mind um, as you make your assessments. Um, thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Um, are there any questions to Mr Finch from any members? No, I don't see any questions, so thank you, Mr Finch. Okay, we'll now uh, throw this open to uh, debate um, among members of the committee. Um, who do I see indicating? I see Councillor Higgins to start off. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, this is one of those ones that um, is very clever. It's actually ticked. I can understand why officers have approved it because it ticks all the boxes that the things that we, as a committee, were concerned about last time, or the last is it three times maybe? I can't remember how many times it's now. Um, and I like the way it's been treated. So on a design level, I'm quite enthusiastic about it. The only problems I have with this is that I don't understand the. Uh, it seems to be the wrong way round. My problem is, is having bedrooms downstairs and toilets downstairs. I don't understand, um, forgive me, but sewage pipes and everything will be above those residential. So I don't know how that's going to operate. The back bedrooms are fine. If there's a fire, they can escape. But the, but the well, it's actually, sorry, it's the other way around, isn't it? The, yeah, the back bedrooms, you can get through the terrace and you can get out if there's a fire above the property. If you're in the bedrooms at the front of the house, I think there's a real issue there of, of things. I know officers and legal are going to turn around and say to me, well, that's a building concern, it's not our concern. But I can't, I find it very difficult with, to put my hand on my heart and approve something that I feel is unsafe. So I think it would be, I would accept it if it was the other way around. I wouldn't have really a problem with it. I think it's a clever way of using uh, the, 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 the space. Um, and to tick the boxes that the inspectorate has sort of said. I do appreciate that number seven is an issue. Um, it, must be too, it is a little bit too close. I want officers' feedback on that, if uh, it ticks all the boxes um, or not. But uh, that's where I sit on this one. And just as a sort of general point, it, it, this is the kind of leftover plot that was always earmarked for the development so I, uh, and I think a single story building is the best outcome for the residents of Muscovy Place so uh, um, in terms of the detailed points you, you raised uh, plumbing etc we probably are straight into building control I, I, I think you were expecting me to say that though <laughs> My microphone, please. Um, big pardon. Um, we've got to start thinking about this. I know it's a planning concern, but it's also got to be thinking about it's flooding. It's it's those issues that, um, and we're starting now. More and more basements are coming, and, I, and you know uh, how I feel about those. Uh, you know, I'm I'm not against them, but I, they really need to be spot on before these things. And I just, I sorry, I just, it's to me, it's just flooding issues and stuff would be too great. 
if I can give you a small um, bit of comfort, uh, uh, as the agent said, we have had this application a while, and Matt and I did speak recently to the Flood and Water Management Officer to say you don't want to add any more conditions or you're completely happy, and she, she is completely happy that with the condition she's suggesting in this case. Um, okay, um, Councillor Dillon. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, yeah, sir, co Councillor Higgins' points really. Um, it's a clever design. Uh, I like it architecturally. Um, and it makes the best use of the land and it's sympathetic to its surroundings, I think, where I think the petitioner would disagree. But uh, I think the single story with the basement is a good use of design, really, to compensate with uh, overlooking issues, etc. So I would be minded to uh, move the officer's recommendation for approval. Okay, we have uh, we have one uh, mover of that. Uh, do I? Can I through you, Chairman? I did ask a question about number seven, um, which hasn't been answered by officers. About uh, is it too close and is overlooking? The, there was a technical point Matt made about the 25 degree, uh, uh, and I don't know if Matt wants to just slightly expand on that in terms of that that there are various things through the. Um, building research establishment in terms of daylight, sunlight, that kind of thing. Uh, and effectively, in terms of the outlook from... Um, so members will be familiar when we deal with a two-storey building, we have 15 metres as our distance, but here we're only dealing with a three-and-a-half metre tall thing, so it is nowhere near being two-storey. Uh, and effectively, if you're drawing a sort of upward line from a window going up to 25 degrees, it doesn't transect the... Even at seven and a half metres, it's not a problem because the height is sufficiently low already. It's not, we're not dealing with a seven and a half to nine metre high house, we're only dealing with three and a half metres. And it's that low height in this case that even though it's seven and a half, I think you said that, even though it's seven and a half, we are comfortable. Okay, um, Councillor Tuckwell. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a couple of points. I think. Um, Building on the point about overlooking, page 13 of the additional um, pictures that we got shows where the representation of the overlooking, but it, it sort of doesn't take account of the, the hedge that you showed in the picture. I'm just thinking that that would significantly reduce the impact that's being illustrated there. Mm. That, is that right? No, that's absolutely correct. You can actually see the hedge if you look at um, Yeah, I've just, just gone obscured along. it. Um, yeah. The other thing I would say about the three depictions on 13, 14 and 15 is they're not to scale at all so we can't, I mean we know the fence is 2 metres, if you actually look um, just visually at what um, has been depicted it looks to be more than twice as high to me so I, I wouldn't say it's, yeah. it's certainly not to scale and I don't think you can really take much from it for that reason OK, thanks. The, the other point I wanted to raise was around the access road and I know we've got some TPOs for the group of trees along the side there is there any uh, movement of trees to create that access road? Uh, no, none of the trees will be uh, moved. Uh, the um, trees and landscaping officer is happy that the proposed access, the trees are actually just north of that access that you can see there, um, and they won't be affected by it. Um, and there are tree root protection conditions on the proposed. If I can say, there was one concern the tree officer had, and, and that was tree officer doesn't normally ask for the construction management condition but he wants it in this case because of a concern that because the gap between the nearest TPO tree and the neighbour's fence is fine for the access but there's that concern that branches will get hit that's why we, we, we yes yeah, so the that, that's why we need that extra uh, c condition that uh, I'm requested delegated authority for for the uh, well, what would be condition 15 okay um Okay, Councillor Higgins. Sorry, one more sorry, Chair. Um, flooding. Um, have we got a flood? Um, I couldn't see it. Last 14. time we had, we had this discussion last time it, as well. Condition 14, but well, it's 13 and 14. Uh, uh, that uh, are effectively bespoke conditions. That yeah. So so there's two bespoke conditions. Vicky's done. Thank you uh -huh. very much. Thank you. Okay, we've got a proposer in Councillor Dillon. Do I see anyone uh, willing to second? I see Councillor Higgins raising his hand. Uh, so I'm going to take this to a vote now. Uh, so can everyone who supports the officer's recommendation for approval please raise their hands? Okay, 
That's uh, uh, unanimously approved. So we'll move on to item number seven, uh, 26 High Street, Harefield. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the application seeks permission for the change of use of the ground floor shop from use class A1 to a tat tattoo parlour, which is use class sui generis. Uh, just take members for the slides. Site outlined in red. Um, the uh, floor plans, existing and proposed. Um, the site is an end of terrace, two and a half storey property located on the western side of High Street Harefield. The shopping units are typically retail at ground floor level and residential above. The site is situated within the Harefield Conservation Area and the core shopping area of the Harefield Local Centre. Um, the core shopping area would retain uh, in excess of 50% of A1 units in accordance with policy. The loss of this unit would uh, therefore not impact on the centre's vi viability and attractiveness and will not result in a deficiency of essential shop uses. I'll just take numbers through the photos. That shop unit there, as you can see. Robinson's, I think it is at the moment. Um, for those of you that are familiar with it, just some slight photos of the back for context um, and in terms of traffic given the site's location in a Harefield local centre it is considered a change of use would not affect the current parking provision the use would not generate additional parking demand over and above the um, previous use and for the reasons summarised it is recommended that the application be approved thank you Chairman OK I see Councillor Higgins uh, and then Councillor Sunspuri uh, thank you Chairman yeah um, my ward happy for a shop to be being used so but I will not be participating in any tattooing but uh, I wish them the best of luck and uh, I will go with officer's recommendation thank you I second officer recommendation please great okay let's take this to a vote all those in favour yeah unanimously approved <coughs> okay we'll move on to item 8 land <coughs> of the rear of 229 and 229A Victoria Road, Ricelip. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, just take members, before I start my presentation, um, there's a piece of paper in front of you, uh, and the reason for that is that in the agenda pack, the reason for refusal sort of been typed over for some reason and not printed correctly, so just so you know what it actually says. Um, so the application uh, proposes the demolition of the existing garage and outbuildings, uh, the removal of concrete hard standing and the construction of a new one bedroom house with a side garden. Um, the site, I don't remember through the uh, slides, and the application site is located on the northern side of Bessingby Road. The site currently forms approxim approximately 18.5 metre depth of rearmost part of the gardens of number 29 and, uh, sorry, 229 and 229A of Victoria Road. So you've got the two properties there. Um, the site is basically the back gardens of those two properties. The garages are there that are going to be demolished. And as you can see, we're going to be putting a house on that location. Um, you've got your existing site layout and existing street views there. And if I toggle between the two, you can see the two-story house that's being proposed in that location. Um, the loss of the, of, the, of the substantial part of the garden in this location would be detrimental to the lo local and historical context of the area. The proposal would alter the existing urban grain of this part of the conservation area, resulting in the loss of the long rear gardens, which is a characteristic of the group of properties uh, fronting onto Bessingby Road. Thus, when balanced against the limited contribution the development would make, being a one-bedroom house, um, make towards achieving housing targets in the borough, it is considered that the principle of the proposed backland residential development is contrary to policy and for the reasons summarised, it is recommended the application be refused. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Um, as has been alluded to, uh, there is some obscure text on the refusal reason in the uh, officer's report, so the Head of Planning is just going to read out the what, how yeah. that should be read. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's the loss of substantial proportion of the rear garden in this location will be detrimental to the local and historical context of the area. So that's the first line. Thank you. Um, OK, 
Councillor Dillon. Yeah, <coughs> nothing to argue about here. I think it's plain and simple. Uh, move officer's recommendation. Thank you. Um, seconded by Councillor Melvin. Um, everyone raise their hands if they support it. Okay, that's unanimously approved. Okay, item nine, Northwood Health and Rackets Club, Ducks Hill Road, Northwood. Thank you, Chairman. Um, the application proposes uh, the... Oops. Yeah, um, I've actually printed the wrong thing off. Um, I do apologise. Bear with me. It, if I may yeah, jump, jump in, uh, this is actually a minor variation of something you approved at a recent planning <laughs> committee meeting. Uh, so I think if Matt goes straight to the slides, it will be yeah. quite obvious yeah. this is actually not a major change to something you've already approved. A familiar sight to many of us who served on this committee. I see some hands. I see Councillor Higgins and Councillor Tutwell. Uh, I go with officer's recommendation. No brainer, really. Happy to second that. OK, let's take it to the vote. All those in favour? Yeah, unanimous. OK, can we uh, remove the YouTube, please, uh, Anisha? Thank you.